Hello and welcome to Campsie Parish Church. I'm the minister, Jane Dennison, and I hope that you have a sense of the presence of God with you as you worship this morning. Before we begin our service, I have one or two intimations. As I mentioned last week, we are opening the church building for worship from Sunday the 25th of October. If you'd like to attend worship in the church building, please contact Margaret Tyndall by midday on Friday the 23rd of October to book a place. Margaret's details will come up on a slide at the, on the screen at the end of the service. Due to re-entering the church building for worship, today's Zoom tea and coffee after church will be the last one. Please remember, if you want to come to worship in the church building, you must book a place with Margaret. Please don't assume that she'll know that you want to come. And if you turn, just turn up, it's possible that you won't be able to get a seat. So please remember to book a place. As I mentioned previously, next Sunday is our service of Harvest Thanksgiving and our harvest donations will go as usual to the Lodging House Mission. Full details of the goods required are on the website and on the Facebook page, but gifts of money are also appreciated and at the moment this is preferred. Donations for our Lodging House Mission will be collected at the church car park on Friday the 23rd from 12 till 12.30 and on Sunday the 25th from 12 till 12.30. There will be a car parked outside the church with an open boot to receive donations safely. Next week is the last Sunday in the month, so there will be a service of Holy Communion after the main service at 11 o'clock. However, this will only be online and it will be at 11.45. And finally, and very importantly, just a reminder that the clocks go back on Saturday the 24th. In today's service, we continue our readings in the Gospel of Matthew, considering this morning how we honour God and show our love for him. Our call to worship this morning is from the Psalm for the Day, Psalm 99. And so now, let's turn to worship God. The Lord is King. Let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let us praise his great and awesome name. Holy is he. Mighty King, lover of justice, he has established equity. He has executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God, worship at his footstool. Holy is he. As we come to worship this morning, we behold the face of the Most High God, and so let us worship him, let us sing to his praise and glory. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you.
Let us pray. God our Father, you welcome us. You invite us to stand on holy ground. You invite us to behold your glory and to look upon your face. We stand in awe in your holy presence and know that you are worthy of all our praise and all our worship. We praise you for allowing us to come into your presence. We praise you for revealing yourself to us. We praise you for the love which surrounds us, the grace which welcomes us and the mercy which invites us. You are indeed merciful, Father, for without that mercy, who could stand? We come into your presence knowing that we have failed you in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds and in what we leave undone. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, God our Father, we mar your likeness in us. But you offer us forgiveness, without stint or measure, and for this we thank you. God our Lord, give us strength, we pray, to follow more nearly in the footsteps of our Saviour and Brother, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our reading today is from Matthew chapter 22, reading from verse 15 to verse 22. Paying the imperial tax to Caesar. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians. Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They bought him a denarius. And he asked them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, So give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. May God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Do you know what insanity is? Insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Or to put it another way, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. You'd think the Pharisees would know that they couldn't get the better of Jesus in a war of words. In fact, the only thing they ever achieved was that they became more angry and frustrated. But failing doesn't stop them trying again. And today we see them asking a question which they thought would put Jesus in a lose-lose situation. But perhaps not surprisingly, Jesus manages to turn it around into a win-win for him. On first hearing, it seems a straightforward question. We have to pay our taxes, don't we? The problem for Jesus facing this particular group of people was that there was no right answer. The coin in question bore the image of the Roman Emperor and the inscription on it referred to the Emperor as the son of divine Caesar Augustus. For a devout Jew to pay tribute to someone who claims to be a deity would be deeply offensive and indeed blasphemous. And Jesus would lose all his credibility as a rabbi if he advocated it. However, if Jesus says that it's unlawful to pay taxes, although the people will be pleased, Jesus would then be liable to be arrested by the Romans. It was, as you would expect, illegal not to pay taxes to Rome. In other words, if Jesus said, don't pay your taxes, he'd be in trouble with the law. 
And if he said, pay your taxes, he'd be in trouble with the devout Jews. He's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Whatever he says, he's in trouble. However, as always, Jesus manages to wriggle out of this tight spot into which they've tried to trap him. He calls for a coin and asks them to identify whose image is on the coin. When they identify the emperor's face, Jesus replies, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. You might guess, however, that this little question and answer session is about more than paying taxes. Jesus was making an important point in his answer. He was implying that those who tried to trap him were more concerned about religious rules and regulations than they were about the state of their hearts and the spirit rather than the letter of the law, love of God and love of neighbour. Jesus didn't set himself up against the government of the day, although he wasn't averse to pointing out its shortcomings. He obeyed the law of the land. However, he also obeyed the law of God and taught his disciples to do likewise. For Jesus and for us, if we obey God's law, loving God and loving our neighbour is a priority. So how do we love God? Simply this, we offer him everything we have and are for him to use. We offer him our gifts and our talents, our health and our strength, our material resources and our time in his service. Rather than seeing our time as ours, out of which we offer God an hour or so a week, a truly Christian perspective is to see all our time as God's, out of which we then are given back some time for ourselves. Similarly, our gifts and talents, God's gifts to us in the first place, should be spent first and foremost in God's service and only after that for our pleasure and fulfilment. Our income also belongs first to God and then to us. And the interesting thing is that if we put God first in this way, we will find inevitably that we are loving our neighbour. Money given in the service of God will serve others. Talents used for the service of God will serve others. So the question this passage raises for us today is, do we always put God at the forefront of everything in our lives? Where is God in our relationships? Where is God when we have to make decisions, whatever they are? Where is God when we go to the supermarket or go out for a coffee or spend time with friends? Where is God when we indulge in our hobbies and exercise our talents? Where is God when we decide what to do with our money? The challenge of today's passage is how important is God to us and what does that mean? for the way we live our lives. Amen. Our next hymn points out that everywhere we go, we encounter our neighbour, and therefore everything we do has the capacity to be in the service of God, and in so doing, express love of our neighbour. We sing together, Christ is the world in which we move.
Let's join our hearts and minds together in prayer as we seek God's guidance and intercession. God of renewal, we come before you wearied and struggling as we continue to combat the virus which has attacked the whole world. We ask for your guidance as we seek ways to protect ourselves and those we love. Renew our faith when we are overwhelmed by a sense of hopelessness. Remind us that you are the God of the impossible. Let your Holy Spirit inspire those who are engaged in research that may lead to a vaccine or medical interventions that are effective. God of comfort, bless those who have been bereaved or who are struggling to make a full recovery. Build them up as they try to overcome the physical, mental and spiritual difficulties they may be facing. Rekindle hope in their hearts and fill them with a real sense of your presence beside them. Re-establish a sense of worth and purpose in those who are facing redundancy or wondering how to pay their bills on a much reduced income. God of wisdom, inspire our politicians and leaders as they attempt to steer us through such difficult times. Raise up people of integrity to be in key positions when decisions that will affect the whole world are being made. Protect us from those who would seek to advance themselves or their own interests at the expense of others. In your church, Lord, bless our efforts to return to public worship. Inspire our thinking as we seek ways to honour you that might be very different from what has gone before. God of love, help us to remember those who are persecuted. Draw them close to you as they struggle to survive against discrimination, violence and prejudice. Strengthen them as you've strengthened others through the centuries. We remember all those who are victims of violence or discrimination of any kind. Bring peace into their hearts through the power of your Holy Spirit. God of compassion, stretch out your healing hand to those we know who have been bereaved, are in hospital, are sick or are in difficulties of any kind. In the silence, we bring them before you now. All of these things we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear us now, Lord, as we join together in the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is a hymn that we have sung often before and it's a mission statement. It's a mission statement about taking the love of God and extending it to everyone we meet. Let us build a house where love can dwell. Let us build a house where love can dwell Here the love 
of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. It was built a house where prophets speak. And words are strong and true, where all God's children dare to seek to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness and a symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine, and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Here the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space as we share in Christ the feast that Jesus, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen serve and teach and live the world they've known. Hear the outcast and the stranger, hear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger. songs and visions heard, and loved and treasured, taught and claimed as words within the word. Birds of tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of grace. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter. Go into the world, loving God and loving your neighbour with all your heart and mind and strength. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. That's the end of our service for today. Um, but please remember, if you would like to come to worship in the sanctuary next week, book a place with Margaret Tyndall. Please remember that next Sunday is our harvest service. And please remember to put your clocks back. If you would like to attend worship in the church building on Sunday, October the 25th, please contact Margaret Tyndall by noon on Friday the 23rd of October. You can reach Margaret by phone on 01360 310 or by email on margarettindle23 at talktalk.net. Sincere thanks to everyone who took part in today's service. Our music was provided by Sheila Jones. The Bible was read by David Irving and George Kelly brought us our prayers of intercession. 
Thanks, as always, to Robert Nielsen for his help and advice on technical matters. And thank you for joining us and being part of our online service of worship. May God bless you.